To demonstrate the new variance features, let's say I'm starting out with a list of strings. I'm just going to create one right here, var strings equals new list of string, for example, and initialize it with a few values, one and two for a start, just like that. Now, I can obviously add new values to the string list, so I'm can, I can go strings.add and add the value 3, for example. All right, let's just run this to prove that it works, but no doubt there, it runs. Okay, now I can also cast this to an I list of string because that is an interface that is implemented by the type list of string. Uh, let's call this I list strings or something like that. And cast this to I list of string strings like this. And via the interface, I can still add new items in there, like maybe an item four. Run this again, and we, we shall see that it still works. Wonderful, no problem. Now, here is what doesn't work. I cannot cast my list of strings to uh, an I list of objects, for example. So, like this, object list equals I list of object. There we go. Strings, like this. I can try to build this, and it will build, but when I run this, I get an exception because it says this is an invalid cast. I, ca I can't cast the uh, object of type list of string to the type I list of object. So the compiler only figures this out at runtime, but it does eventually figure it out. And the reason why this is not allowed is because now I, well, if it worked, I would have a reference in hand pointing to an I list of object which obviously would allow me to do something like this, add and pass in some sort of a value that is of a different type from what the list actually contains. This is a number and not a string. And that, at that point, at the latest, of course, I would then receive a runtime exception for adding an object of incorrect type. In order to prevent this, C Sharp has a mechanism that will find out if the cast is invalid and prevent you from casting in the first place. Here is what's possible again, at least in C Sharp version 4. I can go and create a sequence of objects like this by casting my list to an I enumerable of object, like here. This is valid. Let's run this and prove. There we go. No exception, no problem. There is an important difference between the I enumerable of T interface and the I list of T interface. The latter allows modifications of the list. Actually, this comes from the I collection of T that I list of T derives from. The add method that we were trying to use here receives parameters of type T in order to modify the list, while I enumerable of T, as well as the related I enumerator of T, only have members that return values of type T. They don't receive them, they only return them. I can drill into the I enumerable here in Visual Studio and I'll see the out keyword being used on the generic type parameter, just like I described on the slides. Uh, and I can also go to the I enumer enumerator of T interface down here and see the same thing. All the members of those interfaces only ever return values of type T. They never receive any values of type T. Now, back into my code, in other cases, you can also see the use of the in keyword for the opposite, contravariant operations. And the example for that that I would like to show is I compare of T, well, I compare of string, perhaps, something like that. Let's just make one like this. And then uh, I'll drill in here, and I can see that the T parameter is now marked with the in keyword in here. And the only member of this interface actually only takes parameters of type T as input values. It doesn't return them, which is exactly the opposite. And there is even a comment on here that Microsoft developers have included saying the type parameter is contravariant and so on, proving my point, basically, about the new in and out keywords.